In this module, we're going to get into talking about UV mapping. So before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about uh, crates, because that's what this uh, module is going to go into. Now, whenever you work on something, you need to do research first. And so there's a game I like to play with my students called Real versus Not Real. And what we'll do is we'll go through looking at reference materials um, for different objects such as crates, barrels, and etc. And I will have them point out which ones are real and which ones aren't. And the reason I go through this activity is to help my students understand uh, like how things should actually be constructed, what we're shooting for, versus what somebody's interpretation of it. Um, because in too many cases, I'll have students that start modeling based off of something that they see that's already interpreted, so they're doing an interpretation of an interpretation, which never works out quite as well. So, for example, if I open up this image, you'll see that this is not a real crate. Yeah, it's it's a good game crate. It's got you know the the cross slats and it's put together, but it's also not put together in a way that you would ever actually build a crate. Crates are generally made of uh, pine. They're made in a way that's cheap and expensive, but can help just move product. And this one, yeah, it's got a pine texture on it, but they've got these beveled edges. It comes right to the edge on these corners and across. And so obviously this is a 3D model and not a real crate. With a crate like this, you can tell that it is real uh, because you know it, it is made to uh, be functional. The slats are overlapping. It doesn't just end on a corner where it's been beveled. Um, you've got some gaps and some different pieces. Uh, it's also made to be functional. This top piece uh, obviously is a little bit taller, so it goes on. And then uh, with this, it's a smaller crate, it looks like, because they're just using staples to bind it. The bottom has a single solid board for the base, and so that's a functional crate. Uh, once again, coming down to check out some other crates. And this isn't a wooden crate, but I'll, I'll pull it up anyways, just so you can kind of see. So there's a supply crate. And you can tell that this is not real, uh, partially because of the pixelation, but also just some of the other things are happening. This is actually a fairly well done crate. Uh, coming down even more, another wooden crate. Once again, just taking a look to understand how it was constructed, how it was put together, what the function is, what the purpose is. For example, having these 2x4s that it's set up on is so that you can slide a forklift or something else underneath to lift up. Um, and so there, there's a lot of different ways that crates can be put together. They have different purposes and functions. But the important thing is to start looking and understanding how things are constructed and why they're constructed the way they are. With that being said, for this example, I have a crate, but it's also very much a game crate. There is, uh, There are aspects of it that would be for being functional and being a real crate, but other aspects that haven't been fully thought out. Um, for example, right now under the base, it's just got this extension that's more like the, the top lid, uh, which would still potentially work if they were thick enough boards. Uh, if you notice for helping it to be more like a real crate, instead of having the even slats for the sides, there's an extension to the top and the bottom where on the texture, once this is all UV mapped and ready to be textured, you can actually paint across to create that board right here and then have the secondary boards on top where you've got the slats and then the, the other board above that. So similar to, if I pull up this crate, where this slat runs here and then you have this here and that there. The other thing you need to think about is the way it's being unfolded uh, when you're doing the UV mapping for how you want to approach the texturing. For example, on the side, I don't just want to have it come with the board all the way to the edge. I want to have the board here end and then have the ends of and the sides of these boards also as part of this texture, which would then fold over onto this side where it continues on with the, the flat boards. And so with those thoughts in mind, that's why this was modeled the way it was. But uh, over the next few videos uh, in this module, I'm going to take you through the process of UV mapping and mainly talking about the process, simply because UV mapping doesn't have just like one right way to do it. You have to think about how you want the texture to be approached and how you want this to be created. And so there's a decision-making process there. 
Uh, in addition to that, this is not the only way to model a crate. There are a lot of different ways. This could have equally been modeled um, using triangles, but as I spoke about in earlier modules, for now, please focus just on having things in quads. So the way this is set up right now is so that everything's in quads. So I decided to do these panels as a separate piece um, with the back and the top and bottoms removed so that uh, it will simply fit in as a secondary board, and that way I can keep the geometry simple. But it could have also been modeled differently. Currently, these uh, edges are coming to the corners. Instead of coming to the corners, I could have also equally uh, simply had edge loops and cut across to create this model. Where with this crate, and I will go into the modeling process very briefly to show you a couple of examples. I will duplicate this. With this crate, I had selected the faces done an extrusion, turning the uh, keep to fa uh, faces together off, and then scaling down so that I could make sure that everything was even, and then extruding again. and then bringing this up. So you can see that this helps me with uh, getting that crate and then I, I worked on the bottom slightly differently uh, but still along those lines so it could have been done at the same time being equidistant um, but then having just a little bit more of a pull and then moving the whole thing up. And then I added in the uh, cross slat. Another way this could have been approached is by dropping in edge loops And I would want to use the uh, snap to, or the uh, snap step to get that lined up evenly. And then done the extrusions in. And so you can see both of these would work. Obviously, I would want to. Uh, expand these faces out so that it matches a little bit better. But either of these approaches could work. Uh, it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish, how you're trying to model it, um, and what you're trying to pull off in the end with the uh, textures. So just be aware that there's more than one way to accomplish a goal or a task. Um, both of these keep them in quads. This one would be a little bit easier if I knew later on I would need to add in additional information. So for example, if later I needed to add in uh, a few more edge loops to make changes to this, um, adding in some damage and some denting you know around this shape and form that would very quickly allow me to do it this one I could do it as well and so either way it can work but I just want to make you aware that there are different ways of approaching the same subject anyway um, so I'm gonna end this video for here I just want you to be aware of why this crate is the way it is, what decisions have been made already to kind of make it more realistic for the, the way that I would uh, approach the texturing where I would want um, the boards to be painted in, uh, not ending here, but actually being painted through, um, you know, some of the other approaches to the texturing that I would take, but also already uh, thinking about how this is also going to be slightly gamified. Um, where I've simplified the forms rather than modeling uh, slat by slat using primitives. I actually do want this to be one larger model where I've simplified the geometry. Um, and so just start thinking as you uh, work on your models and your UV mapping and texturing going forward how you want this whole process to end. So you have to start looking at design from the beginning. This is another reason why doing research beforehand and thinking through the process before you ever start modeling is so important.